I've been playing Restoration Druid quite a bit the past couple of weeks on my journey to get every single healer to 3k, and I've made an observation that I find very interesting and I wanted to share it with all of you. I think Restoration Druid might have the biggest skill gap among all of the healers in World of Warcraft, but also having maybe one of the most abnormal difficulty curves of any of the healers. My name is Bowser the Healer, and let me explain. In order to talk about Restoration Druid's difficulty curve, let's first look at Holy Priest and Preservation Evoker, as I think they're a good comparison point. Holy Priest is a very simple healer. Flash Heal and Heal are your two basic heals, one's quick, one's slow and more mana efficient, and then Prayer of Mending is a little buff you put on someone, and when they take damage, it heals them and jumps to a new target, working in the background. So, if you combine these three moves, you can heal a key. I mean it, you could probably start playing Holy Priest with just that knowledge and get a decent amount done. And these skills will transfer with you as you get better, so there's a lot more to do and there's a ton to learn. Holy Priest has plenty of things for you to get good at, but you'll be one of the best Holy Priests in the world and you'll still be relying on your ability and knowledge of Flash Heal, Heal, and Prayer of Mending. Preservation Evoker, on the other hand, starts a little more complicated. I could tell a new player to press Dream Breath and fully charge a Spirit Bloom and use Living Flames to heal people, but already you have to charge up moves, which might take some getting used to, and furthermore, they have different healing profiles, so they're better for different types of damage. That's not necessarily super important when you start, but not talking about Echoes or Temporal Anomalies or any of that comboing business would be setting them up for disaster shortly into their playtime. So there's this learning curve you have to get over, right? This initial entry fee in order to play preservation. But once you learn some of the basics, you can roll with it. And even though it's a very difficult spec to play, you'll be able to make it pretty far with those skills. And if you become one of the best preservation players in the world, all of those skills will still be with you that you started learning on day one. Restoration Druid, on the other hand, is a little bit different. For an absolute beginner, Restoration Druid can be a little difficult. There's a lot of buttons to learn, changing forms from the different animal shape shifts, also replace your hotbar with brand new buttons. The damage profile for Cat versus Boomy is very different, and you have a bunch of green buttons, all of which provide healing over time, and that is not very helpful when you're first learning. However, once you get over some of those initial roadblocks and learning the spec, it's actually quite easy because a lot of the healing over time effects, even when you use them incorrectly, are going to do their job. So this creates our first valley in the difficulty curve, in that we have a lot of different heals, and if we use them, we'll make it through the key. This allows for a wide range of players. I have had Restoration Druids that only know how to hit Rejuve and Regrowth, and that is the entirety of their healing for an, a whole key. They run out of mana, basically every single pull or every other pull, and they contribute very little to the damage. Then I've also had Restoration Druids that never had mana issues, did tons of damage, and healed us without a single hitch. The potency on Restoration Druid moves is so good for early on in a season that you could probably heal an entire 18 key with a good enough group with just Wild Growth and Grove Guardians. I'm not even kidding. I think if you had just those moves and maybe Convoke the Spirits, you might be able to heal a key. Heck, I think even if you had Regrowth, Rejuve, and Wild Growth, that might be enough to heal a key. So a lot of players can get comfortable playing pretty inefficiently, and there's nothing really guiding them in the direction of playing more efficiently. If you look at Discipline Priest, you do need to set up atonements to get your healing out. Doing more damage means doing more healing through atonement. So you can learn kind of naturally by throwing down atonements and trying to do damage what setups got you more healing or less healing in a given instance. In Restoration Druid, unless you're really paying attention to those meters, you don't really feel the difference watching all the health bars go up differently, because as long as there's heal over time effects, the health bars will be getting pushed up. And then you hit your first mid-level wall, when you want to start healing bigger keys and carrying harder to carry players in pugs or your friends or whatever the case may be, and you, you just can't get away with playing inefficiently. The mastery on Restoration Druid, the every single heal over time effect applied by the Druid increases the healing received, that ramping healing effect is very, very strong. And if you can utilize it correctly, you can get a ton of healing done and a ton of priority target healing. By putting a Life Bloom on yourself, you obviously increase the speed of your heals. And if you put a Life Bloom on someone else or a Life Bloom on yourself, it always counts for three stacks of your mastery. So this means, let's say you hit a Wild Growth, giving everyone some mastery. 
and then everyone standing on top of your efflorescence, so that's another stack of mastery, you and one other homie can have five stacks of your mastery in two GCDs. That's pretty powerful, all things considered. And then if there's still additional healing need to be done, you could hit rejuve or regrowth to really add on top of that already existing heal over time effect and top someone off pretty quickly. But what I noticed when I was playing it was that I was pretty flustered as the key difficulty got harder. This is mostly back last season when I first started learning it, but if you don't learn to play efficiently, if you don't learn how to start those heals quickly and at the right time, you can fall off and fall into a bit of a problem where you're trying to catch back up healing when you could have been ahead with a little bit of planning. But once you get the flow down, you can start fitting in your damage and you can start moving between healing and damage pretty seamlessly. It's a very fun experience. So it goes from being hard to start, a valley, and then there's a bit of a bump where it gets hard again as you're trying to learn how to really master the spec, utilize your mastery, and set up your heals for bigger situations. And then I'll be real with you, once I was just doing 20s and I was pretty confident in the spec, it became easy again. And not easy in that I wasn't trying very hard, but that it was kind of relaxing almost. I was able to play the spec without thinking super hard. I had my routine, I knew how to fix problems, and I had a flow to it that was ultra satisfying. But then I entered my first 24 way crest, and it was a pug group that I found and we wanted to give it a shot. And while we ended up timing the 23, the 24 failed because I was simply not prepared for the amount of planning. All of a sudden, I was playing Discipline Priest, and this is where the, the next big mastery hill seems to be with Restoration Druid. You have to set up before Mechanic goes off. So let's talk about one of the witches, the one that casts Etch and the other curse spell. So let's say the Etch is about to come out. You need to make sure that your efflorescence is already on the ground and that you have a life bloom already ticking on yourself. Then as the spell comes out, I like to cast Wild Growth. This is going to give everyone a heal over time effect for any extra things that are happening that I can't quite attend to at the moment, but it will also let me get a confirmed one more stack on whoever gets targeted. Then I can react to who gets targeted or simply check who Etch is being cast on and give them a life bloom. That'll put them at five stacks of my mastery, but they might still be dying quite harshly. So then you can use a life bloom to give them some upfront healing and give them one more stack of mastery. And if they're still taking a little too much damage, you have a few options. You could go for, say, a Swift Mend or Nature Swiftness into another regrowth. You could be hitting your Iron Bark to give them a bit of a defensive if, say, they don't have a defensive themselves. And that Swift Mend will definitely proc for a ton of healing because of the mastery that you have stacked on the target and then will be its own heal over time effect. So you might not have to do too much more to get them to the end of the heal. Then afterwards, there's going to be a curse that gets cast. So now you need to dispel the curse, refresh the life bloom on yourself, make sure your efflorescence isn't about to fall off, and get ready for the next heal. You might have a moment here to do a little bit of damage or to drop some of your damage over time effects, but then you're going to be back into another round of damage. I'll sometimes cycle my Flourish and my Convoke and my Grove Guardians to help me heal through it, as if I fall behind a little bit, I definitely need that extra push to help me get through it. But this is a lot of pre-planning just to heal one mechanic, and this is what it can feel like when there's a lot of incoming damage. I was always trying to make sure before the cage went out in Waycrest Manor to have a wild growth already going so that whoever got the cage would already be on the efflorescence, already have the wild growth, and then it can life bloom them. But this was usually still a ton of healing that was needed, so I ended up using the regrowth first on them just to give them the burst of healing, life bloom them afterwards, and then try to regrowth again. I found success by using my other cooldowns to help make it through this mechanic, but it was incredibly hard to heal. And yeah, it requires that sort of discipline priest pre-planning, and that's going to shift where your damage goes, and you have to become more flexible than you've ever been. I really like pressing Convoke the Spirits as a damage button. It's just a very fun button, but I haven't been able to as often. It's a treat when you get to, but a lot of the times I was thinking, no, this could do more damage than I expect. I should probably set up convoke the spirits to pre-ramp the pull and then save my flourish for later in the pull when I need to keep the heal over times rolling and the damage is still quite high and the mobs haven't perished. All of that being said, I don't think this is something that needs to be changed or adjusted about Restoration Druid. I actually really like the way the Restoration Druid plays right now and I think it's my official number three favorite healer to play. It's that good and if you haven't given it a chance yourself, I think the journey is absolutely worth it. 
It's just fascinating to me that at two different points in my healing journey with Restoration Druid, I thought the spec was super easy, and then I got uprooted to find out just how much I didn't know and how much I needed to learn to become even more proficient. Whereas with other healers, I felt like the path was a bit more linear. There was a skill curve and it would sometimes get a lot harder than it was, but I didn't feel like I hit these gigantic walls that completely threw me off balance. I would usually start to see a problem creep up with things that were difficult to heal, then I knew that the next time I saw them, I would have to have a better plan or better stat weights or something to better handle that situation. But with Restoration Druid, I went really far very quickly, very easily, playing it at a basic level and not fully even utilizing everything, only to suddenly realize that I needed to do more to complete my objective. That's quite satisfying. I think it both speaks to why the skill gap is so large. I think it's pretty easy to get lost in that easier form of play and not hit that wall where you need to learn. But also because the rabbit hole goes that deep, there are some very impressive, very good players from Restoration Druid that can make it look so easy because they can master it to that level that the spec that looks like it's easy and people can play effortlessly can actually just be so mechanically deep and interesting. So yeah, give Restoration Druid a try. And I would also like to hear any of your comments on Restoration Druid. Do you play it yourself? Have you ever given it a try? And because I've never really played classic Resto Druid, I'd love to hear how it worked back in those Wrath of Lich King days, because I certainly don't know. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.